continuing education and training uh, are programs that are designed and offered for adult learners, uh, for our graduates, uh, for reskilling uh, and upskilling. The Lifelong Learning Initiative is an initiative that has been started um, by the then Provost, uh, Professor Taning Chai, now our President, um, last year uh, in August 2017. Uh, this is because NUS embraces uh, the lifelong learning movement, uh, which is a national movement in Singapore, and we want to encourage our alumni to return to the classroom for the purposes of reskilling and upskilling, so that they will be able to continue to contribute meaningfully uh, in their jobs mm -hmm. and to uh, the Singapore economy and society at large. Mm -hmm. So continuing from the um, very positive response that um, NUS has received for the Lifelong Learning Initiative first rolled out in 2017, we are very encouraged by the response and this year, uh, in March, we announced uh, the launch of a new program. Uh, this program is the NUS Lifelong Learners Program. Uh, we are saying to our students that their enrollment will not be just four years of undergraduate, but stretch to a period of 20 years. And we say to our alumni, please come back to NUS. We have uh, prepared a catalogue of skill-based courses uh, which you can access for purposes of um, upgrading yourself in terms of the skills that are required in your jobs. And we are very gratified that um, our faculty, our schools, have responded in a very positive manner. Uh, six schools, main schools I would say, um, the Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of Science, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, Business School, School of Computing, and School of Design and Environment, have taken part in this NUSL Cubed endeavor, and uh, the NUSL Cubed is now open for applications with a total of 534 courses on the NUS uh, CET 500 catalog, out of which 168 of these courses are SSG funded, which essentially means our alumni stands to benefit uh, from the funding that the Singapore government is giving to our Singapore citizens and permanent residents. So I think our NUS community has responded in a very positive manner to the call to undertake uh, continuing education and training which benefits our students and our alumni. Uh, from the supply side, um, what NUS is offering uh, would be both academic modules. Um, when we say academic modules, we refer to um, our conventional 13 weeks. Each week we meet for three hours, a total of 39 hours type of academic modules, uh, spanning across uh, the various disciplines, as well as short courses. Short courses uh, by short courses, we mean uh, a duration of one to three or maybe even five days, depending on um, the program and the contents. Um, we are hoping that um, when our faculty are asked to teach not just pre-employment uh, undergraduate students, but also um, delivering materials for our adult uh, learners, um, they will be able to uh, inject a certain amount of realism into the delivery. I'm not saying that our professors are not doing that already, but um, with this institutional focus on delivering materials for adult learners, for uh, continuing education and training, our faculty will, will be emphasizing on some of these uh, real situations or real-life contexts. And um, by doing so, uh, 
we are very certain and very confident that there will be very positive knock-on effects for undergraduate uh, uh, students as well. Not all the courses uh, will be a mix of PET and CET. Uh, we do think that uh, for certain disciplines and for certain contents, it may be uh, more uh, effective uh, and optimal uh, for PET and CET students to be in the same classroom. Whereas in other disciplines and probably in other areas, it might be more beneficial that we conduct uh, or special uh, uh, courses or modules for CET and uh, special ones for our PET students. But in any case, um, uh, we are embarking on a new education model. Um, there are a lot of things that we do not uh, know as yet. We are certainly um, uh, trying to find out what would be the uh, optimal model and um, the best um, uh, form of delivery uh, for the materials to our students and alumni. To me, uh, a typical uh, CET, uh, the profile of a typical CET student would be perhaps someone that has graduated at least five to six years. Um, because we imagine that, you know, when they first graduate, they'll be busy with many of the other uh, matters, uh, important matters in their life. I think they will want to work. I think they want to concentrate on perhaps um, uh, achieving uh, certain goals in their careers. Probably after five to six years, uh, they may come to a milestone where they think that upscaling, uh, reskilling would be something they're looking for. So I would um, imagine that um, a typical uh, CET student would be in that uh, age uh, group. And we hope that uh, more of these uh, alumni uh, and as well as the public uh, would access the kind of um, skill-based courses that we are preparing for them. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we have a go-to-market plan. Uh, so not all of our courses uh, will be made available uh, immediately come this particular semester. So we'll begin with some of the courses from the School of Computing, from SCALE, and from the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, I think many of our professors are already uh, in tune with CET teaching. In fact, I think um, many schools uh, in NUS have done CT for a very long time. So we do have very experienced professors who have been engaging in CT teaching. Uh, I think um, what we need to do is to have more spillover effect, where our uh, experienced CT professors can, through workshops and uh, maybe focus groups, and seminars share their experiences with the rest of the professors who have not engaged in CE teaching uh, because there, there aren't these opportunities um, presently uh, for them. So I think that um, what we need to do is to provide uh, the platforms for a lot of conversations and a lot of interactions between professors that are experienced and professors uh, uh, whom hope to would be interested in uh, engaging CT teaching. We are not saying that everyone should do that. Professor have a choice. And if they so would like to partake in this um, movement, I think we must provide um, the kind of support and the, uh, the platforms for them uh, to gain um, greater um, insights as well as expertise um, in, in terms of preparing uh, their classroom delivery. Uh, uh, I think um, the new education model that we are proposing, uh, embracing the CT movement, um, will, I think, ultimately uh, fundamentally change some of our thinking in terms of um, how we uh, should structure our, our brand of education. I think the opportunities are many. Um, first of all, uh, for 
for faculty uh, and for those of us who are uh, experienced in CT teaching, um, there will be much more opportunities for us to engage uh, in, um, in CT teaching and to make that kind of impact on adult learners. And for faculty who have not done so, um, this is again an opportunity for them to try uh, to see if um, this is their passion and this is an area in which they can contribute. Uh, because um, CET teaching is one that um, requires faculty to be very in tune and in touch with industry, this then presents opportunities for us to obtain a kind of feedback that would be very useful both for research as well as for teaching. So for many faculty, this will inform uh, their research. Uh, for example, what are some of the pain points that industries are, uh, are facing? And what kind of new research questions uh, we should be embarking on? Uh, also, very importantly, what are the kind of skills uh, that employers are looking for by having a better understanding of what is required, we are actually in a position to better prepare our graduates for the future and truly give meaning to um, the term future ready graduates. So in terms of opportunity, there, there are many. And for the institution, um, this is an opportunity for us too to um, rethink the education model, um, to engage in uh, teaching innovation, to challenge ourselves um, given the kind of disruptions that we are seeing uh, in the macro environment that have been brought about by big data, by e-payments, by uh, AI, um, by computing powers, the internet and so on. Uh, at the same time, we are in a, a crossroads, so to speak, um, and uh, how we uh, respond to these opportunities uh, will shape uh, the kind of uh, education model that we will offer for our graduates and for our alumni. Uh, from the alumni's point of view, the opportunities are also immense. Uh, we see that through this new education model, there will be Personally, I foresee uh, better integration vertically uh, in our alumni uh, because alumni will come back and they will be interacting with their seniors as well as their juniors. So vertical integration is something that we, we see. And this is important for alumni in terms of their networking, in terms of the kind of support they will get. And then we also will be able to see some horizontal integration in our alumni, because now they are able to take courses through the NUS LQ, uh, not only in their own parent uh, faculty, but they're able to cross over to other faculties and other disciplines. And um, this will enrich them, will help them uh, prepare themselves uh, for what will come uh, in the future, both in terms of career as well as personal development. So I think um, there are many, many benefits to be reaped, uh, but at the same time, the challenges are also immense because we are innovating and um, innovation is always messy <laughs> and uh, we need uh, our, our faculty and, um, and our students and alumni to uh, come together to overcome these challenges. Uh, whether the challenges are in the form of um, existing framework, changing to one that can accommodate this new brand of education, uh, the policies that we need to put in place, the support uh, that we have to give our faculty to reinforce our, fa our educators so that they, they are able to deliver the kind of programs um, that will be well received by our students and alumni how we can make it more, make our modules and courses more accessible to our alumni, um, how can we do much, much more with what we uh, presently have in terms of resources. There will be challenges as in all innovation, um, but I think um, 
this is the right thing to do. I think uh, lifelong education is very important. Uh, we need to inculcate this uh, mindset of learning for life uh, in our students, in our alumni, as well as in our faculty.